It's a term called digital blackface, and you may have heard of it. The Slow Factory Foundation posted this on Instagram recently explaining exactly what it is. They say it's an online phenomenon where white and non-black people share um, gifts and photos of black folks to express emotion or reaction to anything on the internet. But they're hardly the first to bring this up. We've seen Refinery29 articles mm -hmm. and um, other articles from other magazines that have talked about this as back as 2017. Um, but it's come back up again because of the Oprah and Harry and Meghan interview and Oprah Winfrey's reaction to some of the things that Meghan Markle and Prince Harry were saying. And so people have been using memes and gifts of her facial expressions and reactions during the sit down. But as we're coming to learn, uh, by some people are saying that doesn't mean you should always be using them hmm. um, just because they're being put out there. Well, this is all right. Well, let's get into this. Uh, we have two doctors with us, Dr. Uh, Aaron Smith of the Department of Africology and African American Studies at Temple Ooh. University. Always great to see you, Doctor, and Dr. Charles Gallagher, uh, Chair of the Sociology and Criminal Justice Department over at LaSalle University. Hello, Doctors. Hello. Good morning. Good morning. Um, I don't know exactly where to start. So, Dr. Smith, is this a thing? Well, I think it's important to note that blackface is a thing. Sure. And the history of blackface really hasn't been reconciled in the country or for the people who were exploited and marginalized and culturally appropriated. I think that's the bigger issue. I think people like to prune a problem, but you got to get to the root and the truth to really find solutions. And I guess the thought is, if they're calling it digital blackface, it's the fact that you're using black people as an emotion, and that might be uh, the concern here? Dr. Smith? Yeah, I think it goes beyond engagement when there's not a comparable engagement in the real world, but then there's this overemphasis and overutilization of representation in a digital space. So I don't really think the memes are that big of a deal, but what the memes conjure up, what they trigger and what they connect with, I think that history is why people are up in arms about, you know, something that might seem more trivial to people who don't understand the full weight of the history. Yeah, well, what do you think, Dr. Gallagher? Oh, I think Dr. Smith is absolutely right. I, I, I think it's all about context. And, um, you know, I, the way I was kind of thinking about this when I've been reading it over the last few years about digital blackface is that um, you have people that are just thoroughly racist that are using memes and, and gifting things where they know that these are, these are drawing on the menstrual, that these things are out and out racist. They're doing it to hurt people. They're doing it basically to, to paint a portrait of a black community that's pathological. And then what happened with Oprah, I think, is a, is a little different. It is still a form of black facing, right? You're using uh, a black face to, uh, you're appropriating someone's right. black face for your own. But but this is more about celebrity association, you know, where people will remember that Oprah's like the number one, one of the number one people in the United States in terms of, of popularity. So it's almost like a colorblind narrative with Oprah. People really love her. And so, and there's another generation of young people. I have daughters in college. And they send these things, I don't know if it's Nicki Minaj or it's Beyonce, but they send them and it's benign. And they don't know, as Dr. Smith said, they don't know the history that when someone white well, sends yeah. out a motive. And then I think that there's a third category that I think is kind of interesting and, and it, that's playing out. And that is that um, it's really among white collar professionals that are white and non-black where they would never think about using this because to, to send something out that could be perceived as being racist by a co-worker right. or anyone. I need would. some help they're, then. I mean, they're going to self-censor themselves completely right. because it's the third rail, right, in corporate America if you're basically perceived as being racist or engaging in racist means. Okay, if somebody sends me a text, Dr. Smith, and I respond with, oh, maybe somebody looking happy about it, yay, or meet me at 5 o'clock down over in Rittenhouse Square, and I give them a thumb... Can I give him a, should my thumb be white? I think the key question is why would you choose a black thumb if you don't have a black exactly. thumb? Exactly, okay, I'm good with that. <laughs> what about memes then? I mean, and emojis and things you know, like that. I, I, I have to wonder, I mean, I think Dr. Smith is just spot on. It's like, if I'm a, I'm a, a white middle-aged man, why would I be basically passing on a 20-year-old black female rapper about something I'm feeling? It's just, to me, it's again, it's context. It's like, why would I be doing this? 
And what's interesting is when I was reading about it, it's also for people who um, do have an issue with it, they were saying it's the thing of using black people to express intense emotion about something, which kind of traces back. They said, why, yeah. you know, if you're mm -hmm. excited, yeah. why does it have to be a black person, you know, jumping up and down or snapping their fingers or moving their neck, um, that kind of thing. And that's what they're concerned about, constantly using black people as a way to express intense things, when in real life, a lot of black people feel like they can't be intense with their emotions because right. it's perceived mm -hmm. as a threat right. or perceived as doing too much. What would you say to that then, Dr. Smith, like where the, it can sometimes cross over? Yeah, and I think it's really interesting that you said that because even the point about Oprah, people do view her as, you know, some type of celebrity that transcends color. Mm -hmm. But if you ask Oprah about her life, she's been a black yeah. woman all her life, and it's made a lot of impact in the doors that have been closed in her face and the way that she's treated even as though even when she's rich. So a lot of people feel as though there's this level at which you can escape racism and escape race and be colorblind, but to the community that people are, you know, casting in this category, they don't feel that way. And it's interesting to see that they're not really seen, but they're being used at the same time. You know, one that I've seen for years now is the Michael Jordan crying. You know, if, if you yeah. want to, like Dr. Mm -hmm. Gallagher, you they know. put it on everything, says, yeah. Uh, if I want to respond to, you know, I'm really upset about something, you see that sent by a lot of people. Right, and I think that, you know, this, again, back to what Dr. Smith said, I think is, is, is on target, is that, you know, it's, it, it, you send this out, and, and again, it's intent, right? So the context matters. But people, it's completely ahistorical. People don't understand that mm -hmm. the emotive black person, right? The over emotive black person, the sassy black person, right? The loud black person, right? These are tropes that have been used over and over in the minstrel and also on television shows. I mean, oh, God, you know, yes. go back to Urkel and, you know, Dynamite with JJ. I mean, they've been around forever. And the fact that people don't know the history doesn't, doesn't mean it's not painful for people in that community to see it. So I guess, where do we go from here then? I guess just well, think twice or make sure you're, before you tweet stuff out. I don't know. I, I'm in the point now though, if someone says it's offensive, like this a uh, couple groups in the articles, I'm like, should we just shy away? I I'm not, I'm gonna only send white gifs. I think impact <laughs> is, is important versus intent. Mm -hmm. And I, I do wanna say for point clarification, Mike, yep. the Jordan crying face is fair game. Michael Jordan <laughs> didn't wanna be black his whole career. He oh oh my gosh. Community. So we can oh. be in the middle on Michael Jordan oh. and everybody can put the crying face. That's the exception. Oh my gosh. Yeah. What's okay, your handle on Twitter? Dr. Smith. <laughs> oh, I stay away from Twitter. It He's like, don't come for me. <laughs> but uh, Jordan is fair game. <laughs> what so it's just it's things to think about. And again, yeah. we're doing this up some articles and people who have said that. So we're just fostering conversations here. Yeah. Um, but thank you to our two doctors thank here. Thank Dr. you, Dr. Doctors. Here and Dr. Pleasure. Smith. Always appreciate these conversations with you guys. All right. Have a good day. We'll Take be care.